As it's been called an alien threat, Elon Musk has warned of a Terminator future. Artificial intelligence has been described in the most apocalyptic terms, but at the same time, he's making incredible breakthroughs in finding genes that cause disease and transforming IVF, for example. So are we right to fear AI, or should we celebrate it? And can humans even control it when it's developing so rapidly? Philosopher and author Yuval Noah Harari gave me his uncensored take. Yuval, great to see you here, to be here in the Piers Morgan Uncensored studio. Last time I interviewed you, you were uh, with us remotely and we were cut off in our prime in what we thought may be an AI attack. Hmm. <laughs> but this time, I can assure you, we won't get cut off. Let's start with AI. Okay. Uh, because you, you're all over this. You, in Fortune magazine this week, described AI as an alien threat that could wipe us out. Instead of coming from outer space, it's coming from California. Hmm. Quite chilling words. Do you think that there's a real danger that if we mishandle artificial intelligence, it could literally wipe us out? Yes, and it's all, not only me. Uh, many of the experts in the field, including the people who developed this technology, share some of the same fears. Um, you know, what everybody needs to know about AI basically is just two things. It's the first tool in human history that can make decisions by itself, and it's the first tool in human history that can create ideas by itself. You know, atom bombs, in the end, they empowered us because they couldn't make decisions how to use them. A human needed to make the decision, but AI can decide who to bomb and can create completely new ideas in everything from finance to religion. So, that's, so it's very interesting because Professor Stephen Hawking, in his last television interview, was with me, as it turned out. Mm -hmm. And I asked him what was the biggest threat to mankind. And he said, when artificial intelligence learns to self-design. Yeah. Now, is what you're describing self-design, or is that an, another stage That's forward? another stage, but it, 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 What's but... the difference between what you're describing and self-design? It's basically the same thing. Once it can create new ideas, it can also create new ideas about itself, about its own design. But we are talking about a power that escapes our control. You know, it's one of the deepest fears of humanity for mm. thousands of years, and now it's, it's actually happening. So it could be like a, a version of COVID-19 in the sense of it gets out, mm. it gets out of our control. It turned out COVID wasn't as deadly as the plague, for example, mm -hmm. but this could be far more deadly, but it could, it could permeate our life at the same speed. Yeah, the easiest scenario to imagine is like somebody giving the AI the task of, say, creating this super powerful virus, mm. and the AI just goes along and, and does it. But and the, could make it more deadly than a human being could. Absolutely. Can, again, combine, I don't know, Ebola with COVID mm. and, and create something that we are hardly able to, to even imagine. I mean, it reminds me a little bit. I remember when the first chess computers came out, and they were gigantic, like the deep blue. And Gary Kasparov, the Russian grandmaster, beat, beat these computers to start with. But very quickly, they developed at such a rate that now it's impossible for any human being to beat a computer at chess. Absolutely. I mean, in a narrow field like chess, I mean, it's, it's long gone. They are better than us. But are, you, but are you suggesting that, in a way, what happened there could be replicated very quickly? Yes. It, and, it, and it could lead to our extinction if we're not careful? In broader fields, yes. It can happen in, again, fields like, like finance, fields like the job market mm. is under... A, a, more and more jobs are going to be changed or even replaced. So let me ask you on jobs. I've got a question for you. Yes. So I was thinking about when I knew you were coming in. I'm thinking about this logically. If we end up with a load of factories around the world manned by robots, by AI, mm -hmm. then all those people, millions of people who currently work in factories, they're going to be out of work yeah. and they have no income. Mm -hmm. So they can't buy any products that the robots are making in the factories. Mm -hmm. So that economic model collapses, doesn't it? Or yes. am I being an idiot? No, I mean, this is one of the dangers. Now, it's not likely that there'll be a complete disappearance of jobs. As old jobs disappear, mm. new jobs will emerge. If I'm like an accountant or a lawyer or somebody like that, where a lot of your work is based in the accountancy case on number crunching. Mm -hmm. In, uh, if you're a lawyer, a lot of it is case studies, you know, with existing case studies and developing law and so on. I can quite easily see how AI will very, very quickly make a lot of those jobs redundant because they can yeah. do it all at the push of a button. 
Any job which is basically data coming in, mm. being analyzed and data coming out, this is the easiest job to, uh, to automate mm. by AI, definitely. What about people like me, broadcasters? I mean, how quickly are we going to get to a place where you could have someone, a robot that looks and sounds like me, that has studied through AI everything I've ever said on air, and, com and I've seen a TED talk deep fake of me yeah. saying the complete opposite of what I think. It was, it was <laughs> terrifying. And it can't be long before someone could be doing this with AI. Me. Yes. It, 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 this, we are already there. This is why you have this strike in, in Hollywood. Mm. Because they understand these kinds of things, these are no longer science fiction. Because yeah, I heard, because, okay, let's talk about that. That's really interesting. The Hollywood strikes, because AI is at the center of it. And what their fear is, if I understand it correctly, is that you could be a movie star and you, you sign a five movie deal with some, mm -hmm. uh, for some franchise thing. And the first two come out and then you want to get out of your deal. And they say, fine, but we've got enough now where we can just use AI to make the last three without you. Yes. I mean, you and have... is that a realistic thing? Absolutely. If you have enough data on someone, enough footage of how they look, how they move around, mm -hmm. their voice, their, their, uh, how they sound, um, you can create deep fakes of that person. AI can now compose songs mm -hmm. like a band, like I think it was Oasis, right? It actually did a song, AI, that was based on Oasis's music catalog, and it sounded like an Oasis song. Yeah, and again, human society is basically based on trust between human beings. Mm. Uh, we are facing the possibility of millions, even billions of fake humans mm. overrunning our society leading to the collapse of trust between people. How do we stop this happening? What is the uh, sense ban, of... ban fake humans, ban counterfeit humans. Let me try and have some positive to what you're saying, yes. which is it's an awesome power, AI. Mm -hmm. In things like medicine, for example, we have so many cancers which have never been solved by a human brain. Is it likely in the near to middling future that AI with these superpowers will be able to perhaps find a cure for all cancers, for example. Yes, or at least for some of them. And this is the big promise. If there wasn't a positive potential, mm. there would have been no danger because nobody would have wanted to develop right. this thing. Elon Musk and the others who signed the, uh, the thousand names who signed this thing asking for a six month pause, it sounds like they were right. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think again, it's not necessarily opposed to the development of AI, mm. it's opposed to the deployment into the public sphere. Uh, I could talk to you for hours. You're such a smart guy. Uh, thank you for coming in. Although thank you, you have, inviting me. you've painted a slightly apocalyptic picture, I have to say, Yuval, so I hope that the world listens so and I, we do something about it. I'll just say again, this, this is a warning, not a prophecy. No, I understand. We still have the agency to uh, It's in our uh, hands stop. at the moment. Yeah, it's completely in our but hands. But it is in our hands. And the problem with that is, I'm not sure I completely trust our ability to, to do what we should be doing. Hmm. Uh, but we'll find out. Hopefully not the hard way. Yuval, thank yeah. you very much. Great to thank see you. Thank you.